a child, I visited the circus um, and I loved it. I had no idea of what went into putting animals in front of people. As black brothers born with albinism, George and Willie Muse became victims of the freak show era of the early 1900s. While living on their family's tobacco farm in Virginia, they were reportedly abducted by the circus and exploited for their appearance. had a pretty tough life. But we've got some footage of one of ours, um, Mondo, um, jumping through fire hoops. The training methods are very cruel. Sometimes animals are beaten. You can see sort of um, scars on their, on their sort of ankles. So they would have started off very young, being, being tied probably to a, to a post of some sort and probably hit with a bar to make them very, you know, to make them afraid. We have had a tiger in particular that has a lot of psychological issues. Hated it when we would go near her with a broom, a long-handled broom. No doubt she was beaten, um, and we we know that they they used to use electric cattle pods to train their big cats as well. Whether it's in a circus, whether it's because someone has taken it on and thought they could have it as a pet, the entertainment industry. We don't want live animals in circuses anymore. Give me the creepy clowns. Give me the acrobats. I do not want to see a furry creature being made to stand on a ball with its legs in the air for my entertainment. I didn't want it in the 1960s, I certainly don't want it in 2019. Hey guys, it's me here, Comrade Lavender here, and today I'm back with another anti-capitalism deep dive video. Today I'm going to be doing the pure evil, the circus industry files, deep dive into that topic. Capitalism, animal abuse, exploitation, true crime, etc. Before we get started, my other YouTube videos related to this topic right now will be on the screen and also linked down in the description down below for more if you'd like to check them out. So let's get started into this YouTube video. But before we get started, there's a disclaimer. Disclaimer. I'm not going to be talking about a SeaWorld water circus deep dive because I've already made a whole entire separate video dedicated to that topic already that will be linked down below and on the screen right now. And number two, I do support zoos. My reasonings for that are in another YouTube video where I made talking about my reasons that will also be linked down below and on the screen right now. We lose our humanity and our connection with animals when we perceive, pre perceive them as only a money-making machine like commodities or a hindrance to making money in the case of wild animals getting in the way of, you know, corporations and their goals. When, co when companies and corporations want to destroy wild ecosystems, capitalist culture fosters a toxic attitude of violence and arrogance towards other species, which is a cancer in society that retains the justification for profiting from the suffering of animals but it also leads to violence against our own species. Since its inception in the 18th century, the circus industry has used animals confining and training them to entertain humans. For young children, the circus is an illusion of a magical place, something they've never seen before. For many individuals, it's a place to see and experience wild animals firsthand, seeing them do breathtaking tricks jumping through fire, etc. Under the facade of a harmless family entertainment, a lot of people are unaware of what capitalist profit-driven atrocities are going on in this industry. It takes to coerce these animals into performing the elaborate tricks that you see and the level of abuse these animals endure and go through when the circus's tents come down. Despite the welfare implications of animals being used in circuses, thousands of animals around the world are still used in circuses to this very day. 
Over 40 countries have banned the use of wild animals in circuses, but others have yet to make any change at all. When circuses first started, horses were the main animals involved in it. But as time went on, animals including lions, tigers, bears, chimpanzees, crocodiles, alligators, wrestling, llamas, rhinos, and elephants, etc. were also incorporated into performances. In countries where circuses are still allowed to use animals in their acts, circus animals have little legal protection. The Federal Animal Welfare Act of the U.S., for example, does not provide circus animals being kept in small cages and trained using blocks, prods, and whips. The few minimal protections that this act does provide do not, apl do not apply to birds, reptiles, amphibians, or horses used in circuses. Many countries, including Austria, Denmark, Scotland, Costa Rica, and Peru have banned the use of wild animals in circuses. However, in most of the countries where it is now illegal to use wild animals in circuses, domestic animals such as horses continue to be forced to perform in circuses. One circus that still advertises animal acts is Culpepper and Merryweather Circus. This circus travels across the Midwest for over 32 weeks of the year, taking with it a range of animals, including two tigers and a lion. The, the circus keeps claiming that its animals are mainly rescued and that it uses perform positive reinforcement training techniques and methods, but this does not take away from the fact they've been living a highly stressful environment and are being trained to perform purely for human entertainment for capitals and profits. The circus has also previously been cited by the USDA for failing to meet some of the animal's most basic needs. Despite what circuses want to tell you, circuses do not conserve, do any wildlife conservation, or educate. Everything they do is out for the benefit of them, aka to make them personal capitals and profits. Those who support the practice of animals being used in circuses often promote it as being educational to kids. For example, SeaWorld, the water-themed circus, has rebranded and called themselves educational. But watching animals being forced to perform tricks and stunts that bear no relation to their natural behaviors or instincts has no educational value, unlike zoos, which allows animals to be their natural behaviors and not have to be forced to be interacted with. Instead of being taught to respect and admire these animals for who they are, children are instead being shown humans exploiting them for capitals and profits and showcasing and they're being like, like brainwashed to think capitalism's okay. Another argument used to support the industry is that it's beneficial to, for wildlife conservation, but this is also an unfounded claim. Circuses do not have the resources of conservation programs, and animals are not released from circuses back into their natural environment or the wild. So the practice does not support the wild populations of the species it uses as a whole. Tigers are such a common staple, along with lions and any circuses, that most people do not realize these big cats are highly endangered in the wild. In fact, there are currently more tigers in captivity in the U.S. than there are left in their native habitats. While some might think that keeping tigers in circuses is a good way to preserve the tiger population, this is hardly the case and is in fact highly abusive to the tigers. There have been ligers, tigons, that are bred in circuses that have been interbred that, you know, as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, they, have, they experience massive health problems. First and foremost, circuses do not even attempt to replicate the tiger's natural habitat or environment. They don't have enough room and do not have the space available to allow these cats to exhibit any of their wild behaviors. And any tigers that are bred in captivity to stalk, circuses can never be released back into the wild. So really, Circuses do very little to protect the tiger species and other, you know, animal species and contribute terribly to the removal from the wild and exploitation. They, the circuses, breed them into existence for capitals and profit-driven circuses. Some circuses, tigers come to life in captivity after being captured from the wild at a very young age. These animals are usually targeted by poachers in the wild and brought back and sold into circuses and other sad fates through illegal wildlife trade and the exotic pet trade. Other tigers have worn into captivity. These tigers are also typically removed from their mothers at extremely early age and young age. This allows trainers to break them 
break the tire tigers from a young age and make them compliant. Circus animals, I mean circus tigers, are often beaten or starved if they disobey their trainers. Broken down and anticipating punishment and abuse, tigers, lions, etc. perform a number of uncomfortable and unnatural tricks to avoid this. What may seem like a willing participant to the audience is in reality nothing more than a terrified animal that has been beaten into submission and forced to perform against their will. When the tigers, lions, leopards, jaguars, etc. bears aren't performing, downtime entails a life in a small cage. Circus animals around the world can spend up to 96% of their lives in transit, trapped in very small cages, or chained up by their legs. The average beast wagon size is 4 to 5 feet wide and 8 feet long. The average tiger can be anywhere from 4 to 10 feet long. Tigers eat, sleep, and poop and defecate in these small enclosures when not performing. This is pure animal abuse. Being forced to live their lives in such restricted places has a profound physical and mental effect on the tigers and other animals that can trigger a number of unnatural behaviors like pacing, head bombing, zoocosis, and overgrooming. These abnormal and repetitive behaviors serve no purpose or goal and are done out of utter frustration Confining animals like this is both once again physically and psychologically harmful and abusive. In physical terms, poor nutrition, lack of exercise, stress of, very, of various kinds, can inadequate care can all contribute to the range of conditions and leave tigers and other animals more susceptible to disease. Tigers are solidar solidarity animals in the wild. They like to live alone. With the exception of mating season and when females reproduce giving birth to their cubs, for wild tigers, this is a choice. Circus tigers and other, you know, big cats are forced to interact with one another during performances, often resulting in unnatural levels of aggression, particularly amongst males. Aside, because males are territorial, aside from aggression towards one another, we've all heard the horrific stories of tigers violently attacking and other animals, bears, lions, sometimes killing their circus trainers. According to a study published by the University's Federation for Animal Welfare, there are around 9 fatal and 1.75 fatal interactions with circus tigers every year. There have been many instances recorded of animals escaping circuses, including one in 2017 when a tiger escaped from a circus in Paris and was later shot dead by the police. It was a dreary winter day, and inside the Jacksonville Coliseum, Kenny, a three-year-old Asian elephant, was supposed to be performing his usual adorable circus tricks in the greatest show on earth, but Kenny the elephant was clearly very, very, very sick. Elephants are highly intelligent creatures. In the wild, Kenny would still be at his mother's side, just being weaned off her milk. In captivity, he was a consumer of water and hay, but for the past day or so, he had showed little interest in either. He seemed depressed. Worrying attendants in the tent where the elephants were chained between the circus shows twice alerted a circus veterinarian technician. Under federal regulation, sick elephants must get prompt medical care and a veterinarian's okay before performing. Neither occurred, and at the showtime, Kenny trotted out to the center ring. He had developed diarrhea during the morning show. During the afternoon performance, he began bleeding from his bottom and afterwards struggled to stay on his feet from the blood loss. It was only then that Gary D. West, a circus veterinarian, arrived from St. Petersburg to examine the young elephant. West prescribed antibiotics and recommended that Kenny skip the evening show. He didn't stress the concern for the elephant's health, but rather that he might pass some blood, which might be seen by a, you know, per a person that's purchasing the show and cause a speculation as to his well-being. Wes was overruled by G Gunther Gabriel Williams, Ringling Bros, legendary golden-haired animal tamer who retired from the ring to vice president of animal care. So Kenny made his third appearance on the circus floor show, although he was too weak to perform any stunts whatsoever. After the evening show, the bleeding continued and never stopped. The elephant crew gave Kenny rehydration fluids and shackled him to his stall. Less than two hours later, a night attendant discovered his bloodied body on the concrete floor. He was dead. The cause of death remains unclear, but it is clear that he was expected to his death.
Field Entertainment Wrangling Corporate Parent did not announce Kenny's death to the public for nearly a week until an employee who was a whistleblower tipped off animal rights activists under public scrutiny and intense public pressure, including a letter-writing campaign headline by Kim Bassinger, the USDA charged Field Entertainment with two willful violations for making Kenny perform ill without prompt or adequate veterinary care. This whole incident was in 1998, and at the time, it seemed like a turning point in the decades-long fight over circuses and other animals in, you know, circuses. For years, animal rights organizations and activists have been releasing horrific investigation undercover footage videos showcasing ringling trainers abusing elephants. The agency had just been fined. The Royal, the King Royal Circus, a small family operation, had been fined $200,000 for allowing an elephant to die in an overheated trailer of an untreated salmonella infection. What's more disturbing is that there really hasn't been any action when it comes to circuses abusing animals. Another victim of, you know, capitalism is Shirley the elephant. Subsequently unable or unwilling to perform, Shirley was returned to the Center for Elephant Conservation and was impregnated before her seventh birthday. Elephants enter puberty around 10 years of age. In the wild, they practice mothering by babysitting younger elephants, begin breeding in their teens, and give birth surrounded by experienced females who assist with the birth and triumphant the calf's arrival to the rest of the herd. Nearly 100% of the adult elephants that came from circuses were lame with serious foot problems or muscular skeletal disorders in their feet were misshapen, ulcered, abscessed, and infected. No small matter for a four-ton animal forced to spend most of its life standing in place with chains on its legs so it can't move. Twelve of the sixteen young elephants suffered from various foot problems or limb problems. His analysis read like a shift report at the geriatric ward. Stiffness, peg leg, lameness, chronic left stifle, slouching toenails, etc. Blame the elephant's relentlessness, travel and perform schedule 48 weeks a year and being forced to stand up for long hours and periods of the time on hard services for their injuries. Up to five elephants were crammed in each boxcar, every circus boxcar. The average elephant produces approximately 15 gallons of urine and 200 plus pounds of solid waste in a 24-hour period. Former circus workers who worked the circus described the smell as unbearable stench when they opened up the cars to give the elephants water stops during which they typically replenished supplies without letting the animals out. Recently, an elephant tie starred as Rosie in Water for Elephants, a movie that, that depicts circus animal abuse. The Johnstons claimed that the in real life Ty had been trained humanely, but in May, Animal Defenders International released a 10-minute video compilation from 2005 of the Johnstons and other trainers repeatedly striking and shocking elephants. At one point, the video captures Ty cries as a trainer shocks her with an electrical prod to get her to perform a handstand. Although these animals are totally innocent creatures, they are in prison like criminals for their entire lives without chance of escape. And the ones that do escape, or do lose it, are shot dead by the police. Some circus elephants live for 20 or 25 years, when they can even live longer, but they only live 20 or 25 years in circus captivity, in these unimaginable horrible conditions, so that greedy circus capless pigs can make a capitalism profit. Circus trainer Mary Chipperfield, born 1937, who died, who repeatedly kicked and beat a young chimpanzee in her care, was found guilty of 12 animal cruelty charges. Her husband, Roger Callaway, was found guilty of causing unnecessary suffering to a sick elephant. She was a star in the 1970s at circuses. She was also known as animal trainer, providing numerous animals for various TV shows and stations such as BBC's Productions and the 1967 movie Dr. Doolittle. Investigators from the pressure group of animal defenders infiltrated the farm where she worked and used hidden cameras for three months to film the abuse that was going on. The chimp spent up to 14 hours a day confined in a small box or cage and was fed scraps from dustbins. She took the chimpanzee's 
only toy away, her toy ball, telling her, go cry about it. You can go bloody cry. Charles Gabb, prosecuting, described Chipperfield as an insensitive, cruel woman who ruled the farm with a dictatorial authority. He described the treatment of Trudy the chimpanzee as manifest cruelty. Trudy had been seized by the police after this and taken to the Monkey World Sanctuary. Chipperfield was found guilty of 12 counts of cruelty to animals and fined only 8,500 pounds. One of the most famous true crime cases of circus animal abuse was Tyke, an elephant that was born in 1973 and died on August 20th, 1994, was a female African bush elephant from Mimbazwe who performed with Circus International of Honolulu, Hawaii. On August 20th, 1994, during a performance, she killed her trainer after going on a rampage, Alan Campbell, and seriously injured her groomer, Dallas Beckowith. Tyke then ran from the arena through the streets of Honolulu, unable to calm the elephant. Local police opened fire on the animal, and she later died of her injuries and collapsed from her wounds. More circus true crime cases involving circuses, this time humans. Sarah Bardeman was one of the first black women, African women, known to be subjected to human sexual trafficking. She was just decidedly the Hauntine Venus by Europeans as her body would be publicly examined and she'd be sexually abused and exposed inhumanely throughout the duration of her young life via circuses before she died. In September 1814, after staying four years in Great Britain, Barman was taken to France and sold to S. Relics, an exhibitor who showcased circus animals. He put Bartman on public display in and around Paris, often at the Pally Royal. He also allowed her to be sexually abused by customers willing to pay for her defilement. He gained considerable amounts of capitals and profit due to the public's fascination with this African woman's body. The stories of the Moose brothers, George and Willie Moose, is an account of two albino black brothers living in the Jim Crow South era of Rockaway, Virginia during the 1800s. At the ages of six and nine years old, they were kidnapped by a bounty hunter working for a sideshow promoter. After being taken from their mother, they were told she was dead. Forced to work for circuses and placed into human oddities collection segment without pay for over 18 years. In addition to never being paid for their work, the boys were sold among promoters like slaves. They grew their hair out to be styled in long white dreadlocks. The boys originally exploited were later admired for their role in human rights. They are being taken and held captive for the benefit of white promoters and colonizers at the gawking eyes of spectators revealed the dark sides dark side of circus performing. The boys were treated like animals. They weren't paid because of their ethnicity. They were not respected as human beings. They were dehumanized, and this was a trend for the treatment of blacks in the Jim Crow South era, but this exploitation within the entertainment industry took it to another level.